Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, let's do a recent reads wrap up and upcoming TBR. So I mentioned in previous recent reads wrap ups that I would get on and talk about every like five to six books that I read at a time. I have been unbelievably busy, so I have kind of dropped the ball. Uh, I've been traveling a lot, there's been a lot of family stuff going on, everything's good, but it's just been a really busy time, so I haven't had a whole lot of time to film, but I figured I would get on and finally update you on my recent reads, and I have quite a bit more than uh, five or six books to go over. I actually have eight to go over with you. Uh, so we're just gonna go in the order of my least favorite to my favorite, and then we'll go over the next five books that I'm planning on picking up very soon. All right, so of these eight books, I will start with the one DNF that I do have to talk about, and that is The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. This one was a big bummer because I was expecting to really enjoy it. A lot of people seem to love this series. When I mentioned I was gonna be reading it, I had a lot of people super excited and telling me how much they loved it. And I think that the problem is that I'm just not in a place in my life anymore where I enjoy these types of stories. Uh, it felt very YA fantasy, uh, as it should. It is YA and it's perfectly categorized as that. But I just found that the characters uh, were kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. I, I wasn't a huge fan of the characters in here. And I also wasn't a fan of the world building. I, I was not feeling very compelled by anything really in this world and like what was going on. And I got about halfway through the book and I just realized that there was nothing keeping me engaged. I wasn't excited to pick it up. I wasn't excited to continue. And I know that this is uh, a quite a long series and has a whole spinoff series. So I bet that these characters go through a lot of growth through the series and you really see like some strong character arcs and that sort of thing and the world gets fleshed out more. But honestly, with all of the other books that I want to get to and read, I just found myself not excited about this and decided to put it down. Maybe in the future, this is one that I'll come back to, but for right now, I really have no interest in continuing on, so this unfortunately was a DNF for me. So all the other books I have are 3.5 stars and above, so let's talk about the first 3.5 star book that I have, and that is The Night Masquerade by Nadia Korafor, which is the third and final book in the Binti trilogy. I gave the first two books in this trilogy four stars, and this one still received 3.5 stars for me, so I enjoyed this trilogy a lot overall. I thought that Nettie Okorafor's writing style really stood out to me as being the best part of this series. I just really enjoyed how she was able to incorporate so much world building and culture in such few pages. Like I really got a good sense of this world and these cultures that she was introducing us to. Um, the problem was with the third book, I think it's my least favorite because there was just so much that we were trying to cover and there was so much going on that I just wish it would have been a full length novel to really flesh out everything that was happening. It just seemed to go by a little too quickly. I didn't get quite as much development and uh, that satisfying conclusion that I was hoping for. I still think that this is a great trilogy that I will recommend. I think it tackles really great themes of identity and prejudice and just Binti as a character is such a strong character that I really enjoyed reading from her perspective. So. Overall, I would still give this trilogy, I think, four stars. This was just my least favorite in the trilogy. And then my other 3.5 star was Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. And this one, I had previously read uh, Spin the Dawn by this author, and I wasn't a huge fan of that one. So honestly, the only reason I picked this one up was because of the most beautiful cover I've ever seen. I love this cover so much. Um, and I had heard from Elle over at Elliot Brooks uh, that this read almost like a Disney movie. Like if you had pictured it as like a Disney animated movie or Disney Pixar movie. So I had like kind of the right expectations, I think, going into this one. It reads much younger than a YA fantasy. Like it is classified as YA, but I do think it borders on middle grade. And because I went in with those expectations, I 
wasn't disappointed or anything like that. Um, and I do think this would make a fantastic, fantastic Disney movie. Like if they ever adapted this, I would be first in line to go see it. And I think that the reason I gave it 3.5 stars was just because the whole time I was reading it, I kept thinking to myself, I'd rather be watching this. <laughs> I think it's a really sweet story, but I think that the focus of this story is meant to be really on this character trying to save her brothers from a magical spell that turns them into cranes. And honestly, I really didn't feel like the emotional stakes in the story. Like I, I didn't feel like her relationships with her brothers was fully fleshed out, so I didn't really find myself caring a whole lot about that journey to save her brothers. So the emotional stakes didn't really hit for me in this one. And then of course there's the romance that gets introduced and it was fine. It was all just fine. It was cute. It just didn't hit emotionally the way I was hoping it would. Um, so I thought it was a sweet story. It was very cutesy and magical. I really liked some of the magic and mythology in this book. At the end of the day, it's not something that's a new favorite. It's not something that I'll probably ever really come back to. Um, and I probably won't continue on with the series. I thought that this one was nice. The way it ended made it seem like I didn't really have to continue. So it was, it was fine. It was cute, but it wasn't like the most memorable thing I've read. Yeah, and then I have four four-star books, so that's pretty good. So I'm trying to figure out which one I wanna talk about first. Nevermore by Jessica Townsend, The Trials of Morgan Crow. So this was a middle grade novel that I have heard so, so many things about. Everyone seems to love Nevermore. Everyone talks about how whimsical and fun it is. And I have to agree, it's that portal type fantasy that's very reminiscent of Harry Potter. So if you're looking for an alternative to Harry Potter, this is a good series for that. I will say, I think because I'd heard only like the most amazing things about this book. I think my expectations may be in a little bit too high. It didn't blow me away like I thought it was going to based on everything I'd heard about it. I thought it was really cute. I really liked the writing. I liked a lot of the characters that we were introduced to. Morgan herself, I really liked. Um, I really liked Jupiter North, kind of the mentor type character in this book. Um, the mysteries were fun and it was fun to uncover those. And I think what I really, really wanted more development of was Morgan's friendships with some of the other characters that she met along the way in this book. We really didn't get a whole lot of her interacting with her friends, if that makes sense in this book. Like there were very few scenes and the one friend that she does have, he, I think he talks completely unrealistically. I just, it did not ring true the way he was interacting with her. I don't know, it just, it's something about it just bothered me. So I almost like wanted more friendship focus in this book and it really didn't focus on that. It really focused more on Morgan herself and her relationship with her mentor. So I think that that's where the four stars coming from. I just wish that I had had more focus on character relationships. But besides that, again, very cute story. I had a lot of fun while I was reading it. It was really easy to get through. I'm very excited to continue on with the series. Um, I've heard it gets better. So I'm very excited to see what else we're going to be exploring in this uh, and to find out more about Morgan herself because uh, the ending really does leave on quite a large cliffhanger where you're excited to pick up the next one. So I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I'll be continuing on with it. It just didn't blow me away like I thought it was going to. The next one I have is The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornicek, which I also gave four stars. And I listened to this one on audio and I highly recommend the audiobook. The narrator for this story was fantastic. This is following a witch named Angraboda. I listened to the audiobook and I still can't pronounce the first name. Angraboda is her name. And she basically is in a place where she's kind of been banished and she meets Loki and kind of falls in love with the legendary trickster god Loki. 
and things ensue from there. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. I think for me, I loved the writing style so much. It felt so much like a fairy tale, the way it was told, and I really liked Ingraboda as a main character. I liked the themes of kind of like motherhood in this book, and I liked kind of the, the magical aspects um, that were introduced through like Ingraboda's like future kids and stuff like that. Like that was really, interesting stuff to explore. And I don't know much about like the original Norse mythology or any of those stories, so it was kind of fun seeing all of these legendary characters that you know of from Norse mythology um, and discovering a little bit more about them and discovering this author's take on them. So I really enjoyed it. Um, I will say that half of the book really focused heavily on Angraboda and Loki's relationship. It almost at times felt like it read more like a contemporary family drama because it focused so much on their kind of marriage and their spats with each other. And some of the dialogue at times like didn't feel totally in place. Like Loki would say things that just felt so out of time. Some of the dialogue kind of took me out of the story, but besides that, I, I did really enjoy especially the second half of this story once it kind of shifts focus a little bit from uh, Loki and Ingraboda's marriage. So I really enjoyed this. I would definitely be interested in checking out anything else this author writes in the future because I thought that the writing style was just so magical and fairy tale like and I loved listening to it, getting lost in that world, and discovering her take on all of these legends. So I would highly recommend checking this one out, and if you can, get your hands on the audiobook. The narrator was fantastic. Next four star I have is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This was so much fun. This is an adult romance that follows a woman named Chloe Brown who she is suffering from fibromyalgia, so she is kind of has this chronic pain that she deals with, and she is trying to kind of make a bucket list of things that she wants to do to kind of regain control of her life or, or get a life back for herself. And she has this guy who is, what's it called when you have the guy in charge of like the apartments and stuff? Like, I forget what, they're, what the title is. Anyway, she knows him because he works on the apartments that she lives in. And she kind of starts out, like they, they kind of start out as a little bit of like enemies, but they just don't know each other very well. Um, and so the romance blossoms from there. And I think what I loved so much about this book was Chloe herself. She was such a fantastic character to follow and root for. It was so easy to get behind her and just fall in love with her. She was very sweet, very humorous, very independent, like didn't need this guy in her life, but he kind of just added to it. And I really liked uh, Red, Red, the love interest in this book. Like I, I think that I really like romances when I love both characters outside of the relationship on their own and I love when they come together and they like bring out the best in each other. Like that's what I felt like this romance was, was them coming together to bring out the best in each other and we didn't have to rely on like miscommunication to create tension here. There was very few scenes of that so I really just enjoyed like seeing their romance blossom. I thought it was very sweet and believable in a lot of ways and they just they just worked so well. So I really, really enjoyed this. I cannot wait to explore more of Talia Hibbert's books because I really liked the sense of humor in this book. I thought it was very cute, very funny, a true rom-com, and it also dealt with a couple of heavier things, and I thought it did that very well. So I really enjoyed this. The last four-star book I had, I just finished this morning, and that is Finley Donovan is Killing It by I.L. Cosimano. So this one I read for an outside booktube book club, and I really enjoyed this. I had heard so many good things about this book. I knew the premise going in that we have an author who's really, really struggling in her personal life. She's struggling to keep up with bills and debt, and she is pitching a new story idea to her agent at a Panera, and someone overhears their conversation and thinks that the main character, Finley, is a hitman, and so hires her to kill her husband, and things ensue from there. It gets really wild, um, the things that Finley gets herself caught up in uh, from all of this. 
Finley as a character was a ton of fun. Like I really, really enjoyed her character and her struggles with motherhood and that sort of thing. It's definitely someone that was easy to root for and easy to relate with in a lot of ways. And I also just think that the concept of this was so clever and fun. It was just like a fun, entertaining time. I will say some of the plot conveniences were so far out there. Like there was one towards the end of the book that was so wild that that happened that was like seriously seriously that's what's gonna happen that's how we're gonna get out of this it was just a little too out there at times where it was like a little too convenient for our main characters but I still really enjoyed it it was just like a good fun time I will say that you know I was expecting this to be five stars based on everything I'd heard about it and it wasn't quite a five stars because again I think that some of the plot conveniences were like just way too convenient like so crazy convenient <laughs> like would never actually happen um but it was still a fun time so i would recommend this one if a mystery comedy novel sounds up your alley it was a lot of fun and i'll definitely be continuing on with this series finally i have one five star book to report uh from this wrap up and that is age of death by michael j sullivan of course i gave this five stars it is the fifth book in the legends of the first empire series i've basically given every book in this series five stars the first book i gave four and a half but since then it's been five stars all the way um honestly at this point i can't say much about this book in particular all i can say about it is that i loved the way it expanded on the mythology of the world we got a lot more answers about some of the gods and we get a lot of cameos of characters because of certain circumstances that our main characters are in that like you didn't think you were going to be able to see it was just a fun time a stressful time the stakes are really high in this book and i just love it i love our main cast of characters so much and the mythology was so cool in this book i still don't think that this is my favorite of the series i know that it is a couple of my friends favorites um i think joshana and stephanie from stephanie's book first i think that it's their favorites correct me if i'm wrong um i still think that one belongs to Age of War. For me, that's my favorite so far in the series, but Age of Death was still phenomenal. I loved it. The ending, once again, Michael J. Sullivan leaves us on this humongous cliffhanger that I'm, uh, is, I'm so stressed out about. I'm so stressed out about it. But again, like, love, love this series. So it just makes me so excited to read the final book. I'm very nervous, but I'm ready for it so i'm definitely going to be starting age of empire soon go read this series it's phenomenal new favorite for sure i love it but those were all of the books that i read recently so now let's talk about the next five books that i'm planning on picking up for the next recent reads wrap up i'm currently in the middle of two books so i will quickly mention those the first being 12 kings and Sherakai by bradley p bolo so this one i am about 200 pages into and i'm I'm reading this really slowly because I'm finding it's very dense. Like it's very, very much a book you have to be in the mood for because it's really heavy on the world building. And I'm not a reader who loves when a story revolves around its world building. Like I like following more of like the characters or a fast moving plot or something like that where this one is much more at this point about building up the world rather than like building up characters or plot. So it's a slow start and I'm hoping that it starts to pick up a little bit because um, I'm having a little bit of a hard time with it right now. I'm also in the middle of Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. I'm about 40% into this one and I am contemplating DNFing it. Um, it had a really, really strong start. Like the prologue of this book is insane, like so intense. And then once we actually get into the story, it kind of slows down a bit and I don't love the characters or the character interactions a whole lot, um, but I'm really, really intrigued by the superhero aspect in that world. So I'm still intrigued enough to keep going, but 
I'm finding my interest is dwindling the further I get along. So I'm hoping that something turns around here and this doesn't end up being a DNF, but I know from other friends' reviews that if I did DNF it, it doesn't sound like I'd be missing out on a whole lot. So we'll see, we'll see about this one, but I'm about 40% in, so hoping to have an update for you during the next recent reads wrap up. I of course have to quickly mention Age of Empire by Michael J. Sullivan. I do plan on finishing up this series very soon. I want to pick this up so quickly, but I have a couple of other obligation books I have to read before it, but I really, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to read this. I'm so excited. I do have two anticipated releases that I would really, really like to get to uh, as soon as I finish 12 Kings and Sherakai, and that is Electra by Jennifer Saint and Kaikei by Vaishnavi Patel. These are both some of my most highly anticipated books of the year. I've heard amazing reviews about Kaikei. Everyone seems to be loving it. I think I'm gonna absolutely love it. And then Electra, I haven't heard a whole lot about, but I know that her other book, Ariadne, was very popular last year. And I've been really wanting to check out more kind of mythology retellings. So I feel like I'm gonna really enjoy this one. So those are two anticipated releases I'm hoping to get to. I think I've already mentioned five, but I have one more to to mention here because this is my other obligation book. Uh, it's a buddy read that I'm doing with L, and that is Blood Air by Amelia Wenzel, which is a YA fantasy that I've really wanted to start. Um, it was a part of the 10 fantasy series I want to begin this year, so definitely want to get to this one very soon. So those are all the books that I'm planning on getting to. Those are all the books that I've currently read. Did you see any that you've read before? What did you think of them? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Oh.